Hey, welcome back to our Minecraft survival world where we're keeping it real. No giant mega builds just for a YouTube thumbnail. Just enjoying the journey and maybe inspiring you to think the same way. And maybe, just maybe, bringing back a little taste of what Minecraft Let's Plays on YouTube used to be. So if that sounds cool to you, I hope you'll like this video and subscribe and maybe even hit the bell notification. Otherwise, Gil might come looking for you and uh, he knows how to make TNT, so you better just be careful. <laughs> Today we are tackling one of Minecraft's most underrated mechanics, in my opinion. Fishing. I don't know about you guys, but I love having a cozy little fishing spot in my world where I can just relax and unwind, maybe think about what my next build is going to be, or even toss on a playlist or some YouTube videos and just do some fishing. So today I want to build a cozy little fishing hut that will allow us to do that. But first, we have a couple other things to do. First off, I wanted to point out just a couple simple additions that we put on the house. I added a chimney to our kitchen coming right up from our stove. I made it out of deep slate, but I'm thinking about switching it for brick. I just gotta think on it just a little bit more. And I also added a staircase running up to our workshop, so we no longer just have to go through the front door. The base is really coming together. Now then, let's grab Horse Horse. Hey Horse Horse, how are you doing today? And take a little trip to the very top of this mountain where we're gonna build something very special. Oh. Grabbed an egg. Here, have a baby. Oh, <laughs> that's like the first time I've actually spawned a baby from an egg like that. Okay, I'm thinking this is where we're going to start building this thing I have in mind. But I might just need to do a little bit of clearing the land first. So horse horse, let's park you right there where you can get a nice view of all of the surrounding terrain. Or you could just eat. That works too. <laughs> Ignore everything around you. And let me do just a little bit of terraforming. All right, I've got a bit of an area flattened out and I've put down a nice stone platform. Hey, piggy. Because we're going to start building our member shrine up here at the top of the mountain so we can see it from wherever we are down in the plains below. Hmm, I think I might actually made the platform one too long. Wait, I definitely made the platform too long. This is not right. <laughs> there we go. Now let's do just a little bit of building together. I'm gonna use these to come up like this. There we go. And let's add a tiny bit of a roof to this section. You are too tall. And right here on the edges, I'm gonna come up one like that to just give it that kind of curve. And there's the final curve. And I'm just gonna scatter in just a little bit of this cobbled deep slate around here. Then I think let's come up from the center right here. And let's add a roof on the top of this one with the same little curvy uppy bits in the corner like that. Curvy uppy bits, is that the right terminology? That's what it is, it's a curvy uppy bit. And finally, we're gonna want some sort of like middle spire on the top here. Maybe something like that. All right, let's see how this looks. Yeah, that's a pretty good structure. With the big part of the build in place, it was time to work on the details. I added some walls made out of these trap doors. I love the circle design. Then I headed to the nether to pick up a couple ingredients for a stew. I know it's not a soup, but we don't have soup in Minecraft. Maybe I'll use a texture pack to recolor it. Along the way, I stopped to battle these fierce magma cubes, which resulted in a whopping one magma cream. Then it was back to the shrine to put the soup in its spot. And then I added just a little bit of pathing and some spruce trees in the area, because I love how they look with this type of architecture. Okay, wow, this is quite a sight. I love this path through here. And here's the actual structure with the soup, of course. Well, stew for now. But you might be thinking, isn't this a little small to be putting member names in here? And I guess I should uh, clarify for those of you who are new. If you decide to support my channel with a membership, you get a sign named after you or a villager named after you for a little more. And you get access to exclusive posts and behind the scenes updates and other stuff like that. But yeah, where are the signs going to go? Well, that's where this trapdoor comes in. You just go right down here and this is it. <laughs> I think this is going to be our very first hall of members. And so the signs will go along the walls here. And if we ever manage to fill this up, we could build a different structure in the world to start putting names in somewhere else. Or maybe we could upgrade the shrine structure up here to be bigger and taller and add another tunnel somewhere else under here to add more signs to. But man, I just love how this little build turned out. And I think it's going to look super great from our house, actually. Let's go check that out right now. Sometime I want to get a path all the way, maybe curving up and around this hillside up to there. Oh yeah, that's such a nice site. I think also what would help is if we added a couple more spruce trees around the sides of the mountain and down the front here. Yeah, you agree? <laughs> maybe replace these trees here with spruce. 
make this a nice spruce mountain. But when the sun sets behind the mountain here, that's going to look so gorgeous. We'll go back up there later in the episode to put up the signs and thank you guys who became members. But right now, it's time to gather some materials to go start building our fishing hut. And I'll show you the spot where I'm thinking about building it. Let's see. Let me grab my spruce, oak wood, and a couple other resources. And we'll head not too far away from our main house, actually. Whoa, you guys like yelled in unison there or what do you call it clucked i guess clucked is a better word <laughs> you just did it again okay let's see if either of you get a baby nope back to my usual luck anyway i think this spot right around here would be perfect to have a little fishing hut and we can extend a dock out into the water this way so that we can access the river network and get out to that village over there and i think this might actually lead to an ocean eventually all right i brought the rest of my materials out here and set up my little workbench for building and what i could do is just whip around and show you a finished structure, but I actually want to talk to you about something. I was recently watching Ethos Lab's latest survival Minecraft episode, and he spent some time talking about how a lot of building nowadays on YouTube is basically just a, a whip pan and then suddenly it's done, or they cut from the beginning to the end. And something that I've really been trying to do with my series is take you along on the building journey with me. I mentioned before, but a lot of my builds, I'll maybe like plan out a little bit of the color palette or the basic shape in a creative world, but I do most of the building just on the fly. And I think that's what I've been most inspired and found myself most surprised. And so I've really been trying to capture that energy with you guys too. Oops, I just broke that grass in your face, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I wanted to ask your guys' opinion. Do you like seeing all the building or would you rather I cut out more of it? Just let me know. I think part of the fun of playing Minecraft is seeing the build come to life in front of you. And I really want you guys to be able to enjoy that with me. So without further ado, Let's get building, shall we? Now, this build, I'm actually going to be kind of taking from a previous survival world that I've played on. I just fell in love with the design of it so much, and I want to bring it into this world because it's one of my favorite little builds I've ever done. But we'll be adding a lot of details to it. Actually, if you watch episode zero, you'll probably get a glimpse of this and know what I'm talking about. This is the foundation. As you can tell, it's going to be very snug. But now let's get these oak pillars built up on the sides, just like that. And then let's come through and add some walls. Before we get any further, I want to add on the roof because it has kind of a funny shape to it. So let's see, we're going to need some stairs and some slabs. Okay, that should probably be enough. Now this roof is special because for a little while it goes up with stairs like this. But then coming down the other side, we're going to use slabs to make it kind of lopsided. So let's see, this should keep coming down like that, all the way down until there's a bit of an overhang right there. I just love that kind of lopsided shape. Oh, get out of my way, grass. It adds so much character to this build. Now let's just finish it up across the whole rest of the build. And something that we can actually do while we're making this is add in some slabs on the stair side to make it look like there's uneven shingles. Okay, let me get a couple more of these down so you can see what I mean. There we go. See how the wood is kind of like, it looks weathered and rough now? And we'll just extend the other side of the roof down on this side as well. Doing the same thing where we mix in a couple extra slabs here and there just to make it look a little more rough. There, there we go. That doesn't look too bad. We just got to fill in the gap here with some more wood. Now, of course, we're going to want plenty of windows in this place, but I'm going to use trap doors instead of glass. I'll just come around every one of these. Oops, we can knock down my pillar that I used to get in the roof. And just like that, we have the basic shape done. But now it's time for the fun part, which is detailing. Let's start by getting a little bit of the interior done with some flooring. And I think what I want to do is use some of what's on the foundation on the outside as the floor inside as well. So cobblestone and andesite. Beautiful. Look at that. Now let's craft up some more trapdoors. There we go, 32, that should be good. Oops, I knocked out some of the dirt on the outside. Anyway, I think, I'm kind of going from memory, but I had like a little bit of a loft in my previous world in this build to utilize some of the vertical space here. So I think we can also accomplish that in here. Maybe let's add some little support beams there and over there. And let's grab some of the ladders I brought over and stick them up, let's say right there. Perfect, now we have some space up here. We'll also add some doors on either side. And I think I actually want the handle to face the other way, if I can. Wait. Oh, it's raining. Good thing we're nice and cozy in here. But can you not actually... Oh, no. What? That's weird you placed it on the hinge? I just thought you placed it on the handle. The more you know. With the main structure in place, it was time to focus on adding some life to the build. 
I filled out the loft and made a little kitchen area with the chimney on the main level. Then I planted some crops around the outside. Potatoes go well with fish, right? <laughs> After that, it was time to start work on the dock. And before I knew it, the build had really come together. Okay, I hope you're ready for a little tour because this place is pretty decked out. We've got some fish drying here on the front of the build, I guess. We've got our little sign that says gone fishing because why not? <laughs> Over here, we've got a boat that's like up on a table for repairs or something like that. And there's a couple more boats. Oops, let me run into the side of the dock there. There's a couple more boats out here that we can use to adventure off into the distance. These are our barrels where we can store some fish and other things. And I planted some sugar cane around the area to make it look a little more natural and that tree but the main attraction is inside our cozy little fishing hut so on the side here i have just some like fishing things i guess we got our fishing boots what do you call those like i feel like there's a name for them you stick them on your feet and they go up your legs before you wander off into like the swamp but we have those there some water and then this kind of looked like chum or something so i put it here i bet it smells really bad right under the bed but uh you know it's a little space we had to make some sacrifices <laughs> over here's our little table with our trusty fishing rod and of course the kitchen with the working chimney and then if you come up to the loft we just have a little area here with a painting some extra storage and our little bedroom maybe there's some fishing novels in here or something like that moby dick or something and then of course there's a back door here with a path that we can link up to the rest of the house that's something i want to do is start linking up our areas because we don't have that many paths around our world i am so happy with this tiny little build I don't pretend to be the best builder or the best Minecrafter, but every once in a while I just make something that feels so right to me. And this is one of those builds. So I gotta do a little bit of cleanup. I'm gonna remove my workstation back there. And then I'm thinking we should enchant a fishing rod and see what kind of treasures we can fish out of the lake here. Or lake, I guess it's more of a river, isn't it? Okay, I was just putting my tools away and I hear a zombie hiking around somewhere. Oh, where is he? Is there a spawnable spot in my house? Oh, hey. That's concerning. Where'd he come from? The last thing I need is creepers spawning in here. I don't know. I have it pretty well lit. Guess we'll find out if we get surprised and blown up someday. Okay, well, anyway, let's come in here and grab this guy. And grab a little bit of our lapis. And head up through our nice attic. Oh, yeah, by the way. I did not put this here. An enderman came through and just placed a grass block here. And then he picked up another one and I actually killed him and put it in here. So we have a grass block without silk touch. <laughs> I'm just leaving this guy here because why not? All right. Let's see what we can get with 40 levels. Luck of the sea. That's good. That's the one we want, right? And lure. We want lure as well, don't we? Why are these all unbreaking rods? Okay, that one's just unbreaking. I wonder if I disenchant this and try again okay lure two there we go now i think if we combine these two we should have the best fishing rod possible i think so off to the workshop we go man i love this space okay combine 30 levels good lord okay it's 30 either way we do it and i have 29 so i wonder if oh ow I wonder if we can breed up our cows and get enough, because I could also use a little more food. <laughs> Case in point. <laughs> hey, how y'all doing today? You ready for some food? Let's grab a little bit of wheat from our magic haystack. All right, all right, it's good to see you. Everybody gather around. <laughs> Feeding time. Oh man, we're so close, come on. Any more of you? Oh, there's one. We're so close. Unfortunately, I don't think there's any other way. <laughs> there we go. All right, well, there's our food and levels sorted. Hey, <laughs> if anyone didn't notice, this sheep's been running around with a yellow coat since the beginning of our world. He's actually the source of the rugs in our house before I even had a sheep pen up there. Maybe we should name you at some point, bud. All right, let's run over to our new kitchen and pop in some beef and then finally we will combine the two rods wait 26 oh shoot am i not having the right one there we go oh man but i should have gotten one more level so we could name it oh well 
We'll have to do that some other time. But right now, it's time to hop in one of our fishing boats. Can I do this in this uh, view? I can. Let's go. And row out a little ways and see what kind of treasures we can fish up with our new rod. While we're out here, I thought we could answer the next question of the day as well, which comes from at owisp5024. They ask, how long do you think you're going to have this world? Uh, well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> well, oh, Wisp, I kind of started this as a world to be my definitive world forever. Oh, already something, a lily pad. Nice. I'm a huge fan of worlds that have been around for years and years and years. I know I've mentioned Dallas Med before, but also Ethos Lab. And uh, there's a couple other YouTube series out there that just go on for hundreds of episodes. And I love that because one of my favorite things about building in Minecraft is just seeing the changes you get to build up the world around you. And I think the cool thing about documenting it with you guys is we're going to be able to look back at these first episodes and see how basic everything is. And in the future, we'll have tons of stuff built out everywhere and this world will feel so alive. That's my goal, at least. So I guess the answer to your question is I plan to be on this world for as long as I can. If that's hundreds of episodes, thousands of episodes, look at that, fishing without looking. <laughs> I will be here and I'm trying to upload at least one video every week and I hope you guys will come and hang out with me every episode. All right, I'm going to sit here and fish for a little while and I'll report back to you with our treasure in just a little bit. Excuse me. Ooh. <clears throat> what was that? Oh, there's the rain, of course, once I finish fishing. My goodness. Isn't it better to fish in the rain? I kind of want to keep fishing now, but I was just about to go over all this stuff I got with you guys. Okay, one cast just for the heck of it. Oh, wow. That was so quick. Wait. Does rain... I can't remember. Does rain increase bite rates or does it increase the chance of finding treasure? There's something. I just... I, I don't know what. Anyway, okay, let's go over what we got. Here's our treasure. So as you can tell, I I fished for quite a while. I used the time to catch up on some of the latest Hermitcraft stuff. And let me tell you, I've been a fan of B00 for a long time. And his first episode of Hermitcraft Season 10 is a work of art. The cinematics, it's, it's just like, it's a movie. <laughs> anyway, back to what we got. A decent amount of stuff. Two name tags, which will come in handy. A saddle. A whole bunch of freaking fish, so I guess we don't need steak <laughs> and some other stuff a uh, smite three and a piercing three book and a sharpness three blast protection four book and some other fishing rods do i actually have coal in my inventory i could pop them in the smoker here there we go but all in all i'd call that a very successful fishing trip look at how low the durability of our rod is and it has unbreaking on it that's crazy i thought it would have lasted a little bit longer at least we fished up a whole bunch of other fishing rods we can use but i'm going to take these name tags because we're going to need them for what we're doing next we'll just pop the fishing rod back in our little spot on the table and wave goodbye to the fishing hut <laughs> for now oh i see you hiding in there hey you chose the wrong house to stake out in <laughs> why isn't this lit up i thought i put some torches down here last time there we go. Hopefully that'll keep things from spawning in here as much. So it's time to thank those of you who became members and it's time to show you what the signs are going to look like. So let's grab horse horse and head up to our mountain shrine. I love this pathway so much. Maybe we should add some more spruce trees around our landscape. Now let's head underground to the hall of members. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a different sign to each level of membership. So let me get these signs in place here and then we can go over them together real quick. Hopefully you can kind of see what I mean now about the different colored signs for the different tiers of membership. We still have a whole bunch of members to add to the wall, but I think I'm going to spread them out over a few episodes just so I don't bore those of you who aren't members. But Big thanks to Seb Meta for being a legend, Dylan Jones for being a villager, I'll get villagers named after both of you, Hunter the Dinosaur for being a member, Obsolete Mark for being a villager, The Button for being a villager, Tony Wack for being a villager, Jacob Carlson, oops I got the A capital A, Jacob Carlson, there we go, Jacob Carlson for being a member, Mono Him for being a villager, Pam I Am Gaming for being a member, Try the Light for being a legend, again amazing, crazy, thank you. 
M1G for being a member, Adery, Adery, Gregorian, Adery, Gregan for being a villager, and Amacromium for being a legend. You folks are all amazing. Now that the signs are in place in the Hall of Members, we have one more quick stop before the end of the episode. In between episodes, I actually spent a little bit of time putting down some more workstations and repopulating the village after the unfortunate raid that just happened to happen that we defended the village from. No clue how that raid uh, got started. Anyway, we got plenty of dudes now that I've been trading with. Hey, don't shut the door in my face, as you can see. And I managed to unlock a villager, not you, excuse me. Let me through. A villager, not you either. Oh, it's you. Who sells name tags. So we have a source of name tags that we can name all of our legends and villagers with. He also sells silk touch and efficiency three and lanterns, which I didn't even know villagers sold. So I'm thinking he's going to become the mayor of the village. And just like you were the first sign on the wall, Seb, is that short for Sebastian? Seb Meta, I think you should be the mayor of our village since you were the very first person to subscribe to the membership. Where'd you go? There you are. Hey, Seb. Take care of the village, okay? You are now the mayor in charge of everything. Obsolete Mark and Dylan Jones. Let's name you today as well. Dylan, I think I'd like you to be the blacksmith. I think you might have been the very first person that we met in this entire Let's Play. Kind of keeping watch over the entrance to the village. So, hey Dylan. <laughs> and Obsolete Mark, are you in here? I'd kind of like to name this guy that I've been trading with for all my emeralds. I've been trading sticks for emeralds. You've been such a big help to me. So I think you are Obsolete Mark. <laughs> now, I think that's enough naming for today, but do not worry. If I did not put up a sign or name a villager after you today, you will make it into a future episode. But for now, let's head back to our nice, cozy fishing hut. And I think this build fits so nicely here. And hopefully it inspires you to think about a cool fishing spot for your world. I'm really sorry the episode is late. Real life work kind of got the best of me this last week and I've been trying to catch up. But I'm so glad I could hang out with you guys today. Our world continues to get bigger and better and I can't wait for some of the plans I have in the next few episodes. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.